Hello guys, hope that you're good. Uh, today I'm going to briefly talk about uh, the current uh, therapy that are used for the treatment of hepatitis B virus infection. So um, first of all, I would describe um, the hepatitis B virus treatment or cure that, what do we mean by uh, cure or treatment? So um, what is HBU cure? It's, uh, you know, two types of cure of hepatitis B virus infection. One is defined as the functional cure, and the other one is the absolute or complete cure. What is the functional cure? The functional cure is sustained uh, loss of surface antigen of the hepatitis B virus from your serum when you are undergoing testing in the, uh, in the lab, uh, or zero uh, conversion of the enveloped antigen HBE AG. Uh, so people who uh, have been suffering from hepatitis B virus would be uh, familiar with these terms, the surface antigen and the envelope antigen. Some people are positive for the envelope antigen, others are negative for the envelope antigen. Uh, so uh, after 24 weeks of treatment, if the HBSAG, uh, for instance, is a negative and zero conversion of the hepatitis B virus envelope antigen has taken place, then we uh, call it a functional cure. And at the same time, the serum HBV DNA, the PCR that you do for uh, detection of uh, the hepatitis B virus in your serum, that should also be negative. It means the virus is no longer there in the serum. So this is a defined as the functional cure. Uh, one is absolute cure, uh, that is the absence of the uh, uh, CCC DNA in body or the absence of integrated HBV uh, uh, DNA uh, in the genome of your cells. So uh, this uh, kind of absolute or complete cure has not been possible so far, but newer therapies are uh, would hopefully someday, uh, you know, eradicate the integrated virus, you know, by different tools of genome editing or something, or, uh, you know, the CCDNA, it's a, a big problem there because uh, the hepatitis B virus, with, uh, when it infects people, uh, it uh, forms a covalently closed circular DNA molecule which persists in these people and it remains there for a very longer period of time. And it's not accessible to any therapy that we have designed so far. But some of the newer therapies, which also can target the CCDNA, are the transcript which are made from the CCDNA, are the proteins made from this DNA when this virus is reactivated. Uh, some of the therapies, they have got some hope, and hopefully, we'll also one day be able to go for the absolute care. Now, uh, in many people, uh, it has been shown by different studies. For instance, this is Chu et al. Hepatology. Uh, 2007. In this paper, they, uh, you know, uh, enrolled of almost 2,000 patients, and uh, they, uh, uh, you know, conducted the study for a very longer periods of time. And these were all asymptomatic carriers of hepatitis B virus who were positive for HBS AG or the surface antigen, and they just wanted to know if these people do not have any other symptoms, then how long the surface antigen is gonna be positive in their serum. And uh, they followed the patients for 25 years. And, uh, you know, they noted that, uh, you know, this H uh, spontaneous loss of the HBSA or the surface antigen continued with these patients over this 25 years. And uh, majority of the patients, they cleared uh, the surface antigen spontaneously uh, from their uh, blood or serum by 25 years. So that's a very long period of time uh, for, uh, uh, you know, uh, clearance of the surface antigen or clearance of the virus by your immune system, uh, right? So, but it, uh, again, is proving one thing that if it is possible for the body to, uh, uh, to get rid of this virus or to just, you know, eliminate this virus from uh, within the body cells, then it should be possible by uh, or with the help of different treatment as, uh, treatment procedures as well. Uh, what are the approved treatments available today? These are uh, in the form of different nucleoside analogs 
are immune modulators. The nucleoside analog, which are most commonly used for the treatment of hepatitis B virus, uh, which includes lamotrigin, adifovir, uh, tilbrotin, uh, entacavir, and uh, tenofovir. These uh, two are mostly used, but others are also used in combination or in singular form. So most of them are just given, uh, um, you know, or as oral preparations. And these uh, are also given in combination. Uh, sometimes this uh, treatment, uh, you know, these nucleosides analogs are also combined with immunomodulators, which include the standard interferon therapy or the pegylated interferon therapy. So these are the therapies which are already in practice. And there are other therapies that are being, uh, you know, uh, uh, that would be on the market in some times. For instance, there are some therapeutic vaccines which would treat the infected uh, people like the Thervic B uh, vaccine. And uh, similarly, there are also uh, protease, you know, different protease inhibitors, some interfering RNA uh, constructs uh, that I would uh, tell briefly about that as well, which are very hopeful therapies. And they probably would also deal with other aspects of the hepatitis B virus infection. Uh, for instance, uh, these therapies also would be able to, uh, con uh, you know, to, uh, uh, you know, give a hope for the absolute cure of the hepatitis B virus by targeting the ccDNA or the integrated uh, DNA, which integrates in the genome of the people. Uh, so how uh, uh, this would go along uh, when we uh, talk about these different therapies in the form of nucleoside analogs, uh, immunomodulators, uh, if we just, you know, uh, take the example of uh, uh, these different therapies here, uh, different approaches that we use uh, for the treatment of hepatitis B include uh, strategy one, for instance, uh, to use uh, uh, nucleoside analogs or the nukes that we call them. Uh, you just, you know, continue with the nukes singularly, you know, just uh, limerodine or edifovir or, you know, intacavir whatever, you know, the doctors advises in people just, you know, uh, continue taking on these drugs. Another strategy is to combine these nukes, uh, you know, give different combinations. For instance, in Tiger and Tenofer can be given in combination in order to increase the efficacy of uh, these um, mucoside analogs to clear the virus from your system. Strategy T includes uh, combining uh, pegylated interferon with these nucleoside analogs. And strategy four is to switch to pegylated interferon. Uh, you know, you start with the nucleoside analogs or any, uh, you know, uh, any of the nucleoside analogs or combinations of the nucleoside analogs. And later you switch to pegylated interferon, which has chances to improve uh, you know, the response rate or, you know, to clear the virus. And strategy five is to stop the nucleoside in world when all your other, you know, vital parameters have been met. Uh, which one is the best strategy? I would just tell you briefly about uh, these different strategies and then you would come to know which one is the, you know, uh, the best strategy. For instance, this is the combination of uh, nucleoside analogs, TDF and uh, FTC, the tenofovir and FTC, these uh, nucleoside analogs when uh, they are combined and given to people uh, is compared to TDF alone. Uh, you know, uh, this, uh, the, 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 in 80% of the patients, uh, it has been seen that, uh, you know, uh, the surface antigen, our hepatitis B virus surface antigen is, uh, you know, cleared in 80% of the pa uh, patients, but still in 20% of the patient, it persists. Or you can say that viral suppression in the form of absence of the HBV DNA from the serum or the surface antigen in 80% of the people is successfully achieved with the help of either uh, singular TDF or with the combination of TDF and FTC. It means that, um, the singular uh, therapy 
or the combination therapies both can be successful in among 80% of the people but it's uh, you know the best strategy to use combination of these different nucleoside analogs that i have told you uh, about it, uh, it and these are given in different combinations because there are a lot of different studies which are telling us that if you combine different nucleoside analogs uh, you know the efficacy uh, or increases and it uh, really uh, would make it faster for the surface antigen to uh, disappear there and for the viral uh, DNA to disappear from your serum and the seroconversion would also happen in many cases. And um, if you just, uh, um, if you summarize all the research data today, which is available, it says that nucleoside analogs may be able to suppress HPV DNA in the majority of patients, but this effect has not been optimized. It means a number, uh, you know, it, uh, it would require more studies for this particular things, but these nucleoside analogs, anyway, the research tells us that they are successful. Intensification of the therapy with combined nucleoside analog has limited ability to suppress HPV DNA and does not lead to improved serological outcomes. It means that you do not have to intensify the treatment or, you know, uh, give higher doses for no reasons. You know, you just can use these combinations that you are taking uh, and uh, these oral combinations and still it can have a very good uh, impact. And uh, probably some people would be taking these drugs for a, a prolonged period of time. Now, if you look at uh, the combination of the nucleoside analog with interferon, the strategy number three that I um, uh, just you know briefly mentioned here, uh, this is very interesting. For instance, uh, you see this is a green line, then there is an, uh, a brown line here, a red line, and a blue line. You know. The green line is uh, use of this uh, TDF, tenofovir, uh, for one uh, 20 weeks. And you can see, you know, this, that so suppression is minus uh, 0.3 logs. Similarly, if you use this TDF with uh, pig highlighted interferon, it means you start with, uh, uh, you know, the therapy with uh, inter, uh, pig highlighted interferon for 16 weeks, you give both the TDF and pig highlighted interferon, and then you switch to uh, TDF or uh, TDF alone for, and you continue this for 32 weeks, then you know, this uh, uh, the clearance, the red one you can see here, it's uh, increased. The efficacy is increased from and, uh, 0.3 to uh, minus 0.5, you know, and it's significant, 0 0.001, you can see the p-value here. Uh, similarly, if you look at this yellow or brown one, uh, uh, this is pig highlighted interferon for 42 weeks alone, which has foot increased the efficacy from uh, 0.5 uh, uh, to uh, 0. Point, minus 0. 0.8 logs reduction in uh, these different markers. The SB, HBS AG or the surface antigen is reduced by, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, even more significantly. And if you uh, combine this uh, TDF and pig interferon for 42 weeks, you administer the two of them, the oral one and the pig interferon for 48 weeks. Uh, the research tells us that there is a significant reduction, uh, even more significant reduction, minus 1.1 log reduction in the surface antigen levels. So it would increase, uh, you know, the clearance of the virus, the surface antigen's disappearance is actually telling you that the virus is being disappeared from your system and uh, you would be cured. There are more uh, therapies in the pipeline, uh, like uh, uh, interfering RNA constructs, like the uh, where 2218 uh, This where 2218 RNAi construct is a, uh, you know, it targets a conserved region of the X gene and it's designed to silence all major HBV transcripts from both the covalently coded circular DNA and the integrated DNA, which integrates in the genome across all 10 HBV genotypes as a single siRNA. So uh, you just take uh, a couple of doses of these uh, uh, 
uh, this, uh, you know, RNAi constructs, and it is going to, uh, you know, suppress all the constructs which are coming out of the ccDNA or the integrated DNA. The DNA of the virus which integrates in the genome also would make different proteins or constructs. So those would also be silenced by this particular uh, RNA ion. It is in the clinical trials, it has got a greater hope. Uh, the two doses of this particular, uh, you know, RNA icon, so 20 to 200 milligram given four weeks apart, are well tolerated in chronic hepatitis B patients according to study. And substantial reductions in the surface antigens uh, were observed in both HBEIG negative and HBEIG positive participants across all those levels, suggesting that uh, where two to one eight may silence transcripts from both ccDNA and integrated DNA. So it's also a good news that the ccDNA and integrated DNA would no longer be a threat to the survival of patients. And, uh, you know, the transcripts are the viral parts that <clears throat> are being synthesized in our cells using ccDNA or the integrated DNA would also be targeted and it will no longer cause very serious threats or serious infection. And this probably also would be given in combination with different antivirals, the nucleoside analogs that I just, you know, uh, told you about, or, uh, you know, uh, the amino modulators are the standard interferon. So these are the choices, uh, the treatment of choices, of course, uh, uh, using combination of these nucleosides analog. analog. You combine endocover or tenofovir or combine it with adofovir or linodine. Or if you start with, uh, if you include uh, the pig eyelated combination, uh, you know, uh, those, so pig eyelated, pig eyelated, use of pig eyelated interferon initially for 16 weeks can also significantly increase the response rate and the clearance of the virus from the system. And uh, about therapeutic vaccines and uh, other uh, therapies, uh, probably I would have to upload another. Um, you know, video, but uh, so far, I just want to, uh, you know, in this video tell you that uh, use a combination of these oral medicine or oral nucleoside analogs that I have shown you. And if you start with pig eyelated interferon or you end up your period, you switch to pig eyelated interferon at the end of the therapy. After some times when you are taking these oral medicine, it can significantly increase the response rate and uh, you would be cured, uh, you know, in that case. Thank you very much for watching.